And it is uh, an incredible pleasure, joy, and honor uh, to have this last event devoted to a project of such an importance that our guest speaker uh, is going to introduce you in just a second. So uh, our guest speaker is Stepan Chernoushek, who comes from Prague, from the Czech Republic, who's been on a full grade one year fellowship in the US. Five months, sorry. Yeah, and he has just arrived in New York from DC, uh, from the West Coast, where he spent most of the time before uh, relocating to the East Coast here. So we are the first uh, venue uh, to present his remarkable project called Online, and the film we will see, and uh, this uh, tremendous social movement almost uh, that it stands for. Uh, we also have a surprise guest today, uh, Sergei Parkomenka, whom you, most of you probably know, who really needs no introduction, who is a remarkable journalist uh, of mainly Echo Moscow. That's his main affiliation, but he's working for the past two years. He's been at the Kino Institute in Washington, D.C. And uh, Sergei has kind of agreed to join us to participate in the discussion. Uh, after the film and after the project presentation. Uh, the event is co-hosted, as you could see on the announcement, by um, International Coalition of Sites of Conscious, an organization uh, that hosts Stepan uh, on his Fulbright scholarship, but also that is based in New York City and that is devoted to something that its title speaks to, I think, itself. So we have a number of representatives of the coalition today with us. Uh, and before uh, we give the floor to Stepan, uh, let me introduce Linda Norris, who is the Global Networks Program Director. I'm reading it from yeah. <laughs> Linda's uh, business card. Who will also, I hope, say a few words about this organization that we are very honored to be partnering with today. Thank you so much again for coming. Thanks, it's great to be here, uh, and uh, thanks to Hunter for allowing us to co-sponsor, and to Stefan who uh, joined his talk just as he's arrived after what appears to be the longest train ride ever through the United States. <laughs> he went everywhere. Um, but I just want to say a couple words um, about the Coalition of Sites of Conscience. Stefan's a, a Gulag CZ is a member. We are now about 270 organizations in 67 countries around the world. So we are in lots of places. And the things that unite our members uh, are a couple different things. One, a commitment to place. Sometimes that commitment to place is a really a specific place. The Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island here in New York are coalition members. Sometimes it's commitment to a place or places that aren't really reachable. The Gulag sites, um, but also our members who are working outside of Syria and Yemen, but concerned about sites there. We also believe that dialogue is the way to think about all of these sites, because our main idea always is to think about how to turn memory into action. So just remembering a place is never enough. It's the idea, whether it's the Tulsling Genocide Museum, whether it's an Argentinian prison, whether it's the Lorraine Motel where Martin Luther King was shot, the idea that we, we as citizens of the world have something to learn for the future, that we can create a more just future for everyone by understanding the past. So I'm really pleased Stefan's here. I brought bookmarks for everyone if you want to learn a little more about what we do and take them and pass back. Um, and I'm happy afterwards to answer any questions um, anyone might have about the coalition. But I'm particularly pleased to have Stefan uh, join us. He and I started talking about a Fulbright for him a while ago, a year and a half ago, two years ago probably at this point. So it's so exciting he got to do it. He vi has already visited many of our sites in the US and still has some more to come. And that's also part of what the coalition does is bring our members together around issues of common interest. So I'm super excited to hear his presentation. I'm going to let him get started. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Linda. Thank you very much, uh, Yasha. Thank you to uh, Coalition of Sides of Conscience for uh, 
uh, support and hosting to me at the uh, Fulbright Scholarship in the United States. Thank you to Hunter uh, College for inviting uh, me to screen uh, our very new movie. Uh, I will uh, first I will uh, speak a little about our project, uh, about uh, about topic which are focused on, and uh, then uh, we will uh, you will. Uh, watch uh, the movie which is uh, very new it's uh, we finished the movie just during my uh, my um, uh, my Fulbright scholarship here in the United States the English subtitles are just one month old so it's it's very new it's a uh, uh, New York premiere it will be a New York premiere so we are very lucky <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, after the movie uh, uh, we will discuss more the, 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 the topic of Denmark uh, and today's Russia uh, relations to to the Soviet past and Soviet uh, Soviet uh, repressive past. And uh, I hope uh, Sergei Parkomenko will join me to 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 answer some questions. Yeah. And uh, yeah, for me. Uh, I have never expected to that uh, the result of my trips to Russia, to Siberia, to very remote parts, that the result of this uh, trip would be uh, a five-month long trip to the United States. It's very su still surprised for me, but I'm really happy about that because uh, uh, I until now. I have visited uh, around 30 uh, American museums and sites and institutions which uh, somehow uh, deal with the sensitive chapters of uh, history, mainly American because of course I'm in the United States. And uh, it's really interesting for me to, to, uh, to learn how, uh, what are the approaches uh, of American museum insights to these uh, topics and and how these uh, museums uh, use new technologies because we in our team of the Gulag CZ we focus mainly on uh, virtual reality or augmented reality online museum because we don't have a site we don't have a Gulag in, in, in the Czech Republic uh, but we visit sites in Siberia we map it, then we uh, the results publish uh, on the internet, and we uh, we have been developing uh, new experience in virtual reality and augmented reality, which I would like to show you in the very end of today's uh, presentation, maybe after the, the uh, discussion. So uh, I was uh, maybe you are interested where I was in in in, 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 in California. In, in the United States, I visited uh, uh, two former concentration camps for American and Japanese during the World War II uh, in Manzanar and Two Lake, which is uh, 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 north of California. And I was also in Alcatraz and in uh, Angel Island in San Francisco and the um, uh, Museum of Tolerance in uh, Los Angeles. And also in in, uh, in um, uh, Joshua Tree National Park, which is a beautiful natural park, but there is a lot of abandoned uh, mines and farms, which are uh, preserved uh, for visitors. And this is what interested me because we also visit a lot of uh, abandoned uh, gulag camps in Siberia, and so I was in, uh, curious about the way how they preserve it here. In, States, places like that. So then we moved to, because I traveled with my family, uh, we moved to by train from Los Angeles to, to uh, New Orleans. It took two days, 48 hours, and it was a great experience. But I have to say that the uh, Russian trains are a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, a lot of people use it in Russia, and it's almost nobody uses it uh, in the United States. Only very French people and uh, I was <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was okay. It was really nice. It was really nice. I liked it. And uh, in in uh, in New Orleans and then uh, in uh, in uh, in the south other southern states, uh, I visited many 
uh, museums from former plantations. Uh, it was interesting to compare the approach of private museums and the museums which are members of this uh, coalition of the Sites of Conscience, which focus more on on the slavery and, and the hard life at that time. The private are more, more, more focused on uh, nice gardens uh, around and so on. So this, is, this, was, this was also very uh, interesting. And also I visited a very new museum in uh, Montgomery, Alabama, Legacy Museum, which was opened last year in April. And uh, it's uh, about uh, uh, race terror, and there's a memorial of victims of lynching uh, in, in Montgomery, which was uh, inspired by <coughs> Holocaust memorials, for example, in, in Berlin. And it's really impressive to, to see places like this in, in Montgomery, in, in Alabama. And uh, I recommend you, to everybody, to, to visit uh, these, these sites. So sometimes I feel really uh, like over-experienced <laughs> from all these uh, visits and from the United States and also during my trip to the United States I uh, started to uh, develop maybe somehow to my idea about a moving exhibition about the gulags and, and Soviet uh, repressions and, uh, and uh, using both physical objects and, and virtual reality, augmented reality, that's what, what, what we do. And uh, in the movie, by the way, you will see how we, how we uh, gathered all the data necessary for the uh, virtual and augmented realities. And why maybe, uh, maybe uh, you uh, could be uh, confused or interested why Czechs are planning to make uh, to have an exhibition in the United States about Russian past. But the answer is very easy because uh, that period of uh, Soviet terror and uh, Soviet uh, repressive past, uh, especially during the uh, Stalin era, but not only uh, about the Gulags, it was not only a history of Russians or of Soviet citizens. It concerned also a lot of people from all over the world. There were around 20,000 Czechs or Czechoslovak citizens who were like victims of Soviet uh, repressions. They went through the gulags or they were executed or, or deported to other places in, 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 in Soviet Union. There were a lot of thousands of people from other countries, from Poland, France, uh, Netherlands, and even from the United States. Uh, did you do you know about the, the story of, of Americans in the Gulag? I was surprised that almost nobody knows it about the, in, here in the United States. And this is a book of British journalist Tim Soliadis, The Forsaken, and it is about uh, about Americans uh, who were repressed in Soviet Union in the 1930s, and uh, they were they were mostly. Uh, normal workers who lost their jobs uh, during the Big Depression in the beginning of the 1930s. And they decided to emigrate from the United States to Soviet Union because at that time there was a huge propaganda, Soviet propaganda about the great life in the Soviet Union. So thousands of Americans decided to, to move to Soviet Union. There were a couple of uh, baseball teams in Moscow at that time uh, for Americans. But in the end of the 30s, during so-called Great Terror, uh, almost all of them were like, arrested as spies, and many of them were executed, and many of them were sent to the gulags, and only a few of them survived. So that's why I find this topic like, very international, not international, it was like human, human tragedy, not, not, uh, not only Russian wars. So that's that's why I focus uh, on this uh, this topic, and uh, I started to be interested in the topic many many years ago. It has been a long process. Uh, I started to travel to Russia in 1994 when I was 16, 
and step by step I visited uh, very remote parts of Siberia and far north and these places are very often connected with the history of Reykjavik and the towns there are were built by Gulag prisoners very often and I started to read some memoirs about activist museums at uh, these places and I was surprised how confused is the tell, tell, like, telling of the history uh, for example, in one small city of Turkhans in Siberia, uh, there's a small museum, and in one room there is an ex exhibition about the Gulags in, in that area, and in the second room there is an exhibition which celebrates Yakov Sverdlov, who was sent by Tsar in, in, uh, to that place, and who was one of the responsible persons uh, of the repressions. But they celebrated in the museum both the responsible person and, and also the the the, 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 case of the and it's, uh, and it's 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 very unfortunately often this uh, this approach to to history and there is no one uh, museum built from uh, abandoned or former gulag camps. However, do you have <laughs> idea how many gulags gulag <coughs> camps were in? Soviet Union, approximately around, according to data of Memorial Society, Independent Russian Memorial Society, there were uh, around 30,000 work camps from 1920s till 19, uh, 1960s. And around 20 million people went through the gulags. More than half of them were like, political uh, prisoners and almost two million of them uh, did not survive. So, um, yes. It's, uh, sorry, I forgot what, what I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, it's about what, I, and there are still hundreds of uh, remains of these camps and only in one of them was uh, established a museum. It's, it is in the city of Perm. The museum is called Perm 36. And, uh, but the management or people who founded this museum were expelled by local authorities a few years ago. And the great uh, exhibition about the Gulag and about the Soviet dissidents uh, who were arrested in this camp in 1970s, 80s. The exhibition was replaced of another one which celebrates uh, Gulag guards. So that's like today's approach of local authorities <coughs> to this topic. But not only, there's a, in, 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 in Moscow there's a quite good museum of the Gulag and, uh, and there's still a lot of uh, independent historians and organizations as, as Memorial who to focus on the topic and they do a very good job without which we wouldn't be able to organize our expeditions but they are very often under big pressure but maybe we'll speak more about it uh, after the movie. So uh, the result of my trips to Siberia were expeditions to abandon Bula camps and the movie, the very new movie, is about the third expedition from four. Uh, which took a place in two, 2013, but we finished the movie on now. And it's uh, about, uh, you will see what, what, what it's about. So, the jur A Journey to the Gulag, the movie, it will last 30 minutes.
should we start the discussion yeah. at this table and open it? To yeah, the I would like to invite uh, Sergei Markomenko, uh, who is uh, uh, who is an author of a uh, commemorate project called uh, called uh, the Last Address. Which is uh, which is similar to uh, the project of uh, Stolperstein's. Maybe you know the project Stolperstein's, but from the uh, uh, maybe Sergey can you can tell more yeah, about the project then. Yeah, we started last time this project six, six years ago. Uh, it, it's almost the same idea, same principle as uh, this. By famous Stolperstein. Stolperstein's uh, project, uh, was developed in uh, more or less 15 European countries. Now started by German, uh, by German activist and uh, and artist uh, uh, in uh, 1993. Uh, uh, it was uh, Günther Demk uh, near Berlin. It's a small, like, uh, plates like this, put it on the stones on the pavement of European uh, cities, and now uh, Demk and his uh, his team uh, put. Mm, well, fifty thousand, or may maybe even sixty thousand of, of uh, these this, uh, stones in uh, seven hundred European cities, and uh, each stone is a place where lived uh, one of victim of Nazi uh, era. It may be Jews or or. Slavic people or uh, homosexual or uh, some uh, religious minority uh, like Jehovah's <coughs> Witnesses or something like this. So we started six, six years ago, uh, almost the same project, but uh, uh, to commemorate uh, victims of uh, political repressions in the in, uh, Soviet Union. And uh, we put some also metal plates like this, like postcards, 11 to 19 centimeters, with uh, just the, the small, just just few words: the, the name of the person, the profession, born this date, arrested date, uh, executed date, and rehabilitated. And uh, this plate is put on the building uh, where these this people live. Uh, it was the, the last physical address of this, this people. So we, we uh, made now uh, 900 plates in 47 Russian cities and also uh, some plate in some cities in Ukraine, in Czech Republic, uh, and uh, Stepan Chernovshek was uh, the uh, origin of this Czech project of Pasednia Adresa. And also in uh, Moldova and Georgia now. And uh, we start this year also in Germany, uh, in Romania in Kazakhstan and maybe also in France because some some people was was uh, stolen by uh, Soviet uh, KGB uh, in Paris and uh, some French French cities also so we have some activists in France who wants to to organize the same project in France uh, uh, so it's it's almost same because uh, you know we uh, we have now uh, in many countries some different project 
uh, who uh, it's a project of memory of uh, political victims and uh, the physical physical uh, um, execution is different but the idea is same uh, it's an idea to to have an exact place uh, of uh, of the um, the repression. It's uh, we have this this projects projects in uh, Argentina or in uh, South Africa, in Cambodia, in uh, many uh, ex Yugoslavian countries, and uh, all these uh, countries of Stolperstein and all these countries of Asledniadis. Uh, so it's uh, every time the same idea to put the memory in the exact geographical place in the, in the, to, to be uh, to, uh, to have an exact geoposition of, of, uh, of, of crime of, uh, of uh, repression and of human life because it's uh, uh, always the same idea to make some kind of zoom of, of the of the uh, historical uh, historical uh, um, uh, of, the, of the of the big history because uh, normally we discuss the history as uh, something uh, statistical as as, uh, as uh, something uh, geopolitical as a uh, huge numbers as uh, in terms of of uh, superpowers uh, um, who uh, who fight uh, each other in terms of uh, industrialization, in terms of uh, Second World War, in terms of competition of different uh, different political systems. But uh, our idea of all these projects and these projects also is uh, to see. Uh, attentively, one single person, one single life, one single name, one single destiny, one single fate, one single, uh, one single uh, arms. So uh, it's uh, it changed everything. It's, it changed uh, everything in this in this discussion. If you uh, uh, start uh, to discuss this, not on, in terms of history or big history and a big fighting of big power but in terms of one single human life and uh, if you have exact address if you have exact home or exact place on the pavement or uh, exact uh, building uh, of, uh, where uh, this person uh, lived uh, it's it's easier to, to speak about about this person, about this exact name and this exact life. Uh, and another very important thing in uh, uh, this kind of project, like Stolperstein or uh, Baslidnyandis, uh, is the idea uh, of uh, have one single person behind every single sign. Uh, so. Pasliniadis uh, and Stockerstein uh, 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 never do uh, uh, some list of uh, addresses or or persons. We we need uh, somebody who ask uh, 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 us to uh, to make this sign. Some uh, uh, some person who write to our project. I want to put this this plate in this address with this name uh, and I'm okay to pay some amount of money it's not, not so much for Stolkenstein it's uh, more or less a hundred euro and in Russia it's a uh, 400 rubles that's maybe a little bit more than 50 dollars uh, it's important because this person have a right to, to, to see this, this small, this micro monument as 
you, uh, as his own monument, as, as something uh, made by this person and paid by this person. Just this small sign with some words. And uh, uh, we have this community of people who ask our project to, to do this, this commemoration art. And we have another community of people living in uh, all these uh, buildings. Because we need, we need a permission. We need uh, these people to accept this, uh, this ceremony. Uh, and uh, we can put this plate uh, only with the permission of people living now in this in this building or on this this building. And then maybe the most interesting, it's a discussion between our uh, volunteers who come to this building to explain to people what is the idea and why we need to put this display in this exact building. So discussion between these people and uh, people inhabited this, uh, this uh, address uh, is the most important thing. It's the most uh, significant thing because the final goal of this kind of project is not to put thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands same plates in, in every addresses, but to put together, to create a community of people who uh, speaks about, who thinks about, who, uh, who want to discuss it, and uh, who want to commemorate it. It's a very important for Russia now and for uh, all other uh, Soviet uh, Soviet countries, uh, uh, including Ukraine or Moldova or Georgia or so on. So uh, we work not with with addresses. We work not with with uh, with stainless steel. We work with with uh, persons. We work, we work with with, with uh, our uh, our people, like just like. Uh, the work of uh, Stefan with this uh, this uh, uh, interactive maps and interactive project uh, of all these uh, camps. I have a question. What's the reaction of the people in the community with whom you speak about, about options? Uh, different reactions. Yeah. Very yeah. different reactions. Yeah. Normally, we have this permission. Oh. Maybe in uh, uh, maybe one building for ten uh, uh, refuse this, but normally we have this permission because it's very interesting. Because uh, it's 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 clear we have these uh, two bubbles: the bubble of Stalinists and another bubble of of anti-Stalinists in Russia. And it's very difficult to make people to move from one bubble to another one. It's almost impossible if you discuss history, if you discuss Second World War, uh, industrialization, economy, uh, superpowers, role of Stalin, <coughs> role of Communist Party. It's absolutely impossible to make people move from one bubble to another one. But it's absolutely po uh, possible if you speak about uh, uh, about this life, this name, this faith, uh, this uh, 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 this uh, person, and uh, it's uh, often these these people uh, don't want this this uh, uh, this kind of of uh, plates uh, before we start to uh, speak about the. The, the, this this person and uh, our uh, activists, our uh, uh, volunteers, uh, tell yeah okay okay Stalin is okay Stalinism is okay communism is okay but what about this person but what about this uh, Natalia Ivanovna what about this 
Mikhail is just just this person, not a Stalin and Stalinist, but just this person you see uh, with with uh, this is a the image of this person. This is the name. This is the profession. This is the, all the story of of his life. What about this? Not what about Stalin, but what about this person? It works perfectly. <laughs> and and uh, uh, people uh, understand very, very easy, very easier what is Stalinism and what is repression and what is uh, all this tragedy of uh, uh, Russian catastrophe. It's, a, it's, a, it's more or less the same. It's, it's also uh, about six million uh, people uh, touched by, by um, uh, by repressions, uh, with uh, uh, eight hundred thousand of executed, uh, and uh, maybe twice of this died um, <coughs> in camps, uh, uh, in these camps of uh, in in uh, Siberia, and. Uh, uh, it's very easy to explain to people uh, this big historical idea if you s start by by uh, uh, by name and by people of uh, of a single person. Can I um, thank you so much? And these two projects are really, if you just think of them spatially, in a sense, последний address is the last address of a person who would end up in one of those places that we just saw in Stepan's films, but also they're very, obviously they have so much in common, but they're very different in terms of how they carry out uh, the task of preserving memory, historical memory. The last address is a small plate attached to the wall of this building, and this is something very unique, I think, what Stepan, you do, uh, because maybe you could say a few more words actually about what the Gulag Online project is about and how this task of preserving memory is delivered uh, to contemporary public audience, which is all you know virtual, and how many people have will have seen this film compared to how many people will have seen the website. Uh, so my question is about the re realization of ultimately the same task. And of course, there are, maybe you could also say what you think about a number of other projects, such as the Topography of Terror, Topographia Terrora, a project created by the Memorial Society, I think mainly, which is, again, located, grounded only within the city of Moscow. But it's a fascinating historical, digital method of Memory, memorializing the sites, but again, only within the city, and we don't know. Uh, perhaps through your project, only do we know what happens to those same people, persons, after? Yeah, it, uh, you know, in, in, in current Russia, there's a lot of very interesting projects uh, which somehow commemorate uh, the memory of, uh, of history of repressions. And you mentioned a couple of them uh, from Memorial Society as, uh, as topography of terror or, or, uh, or uh, another, another uh, projects which, uh, which are focused on specific places as uh, uh, Sandarmok uh, place where uh, which is a grave of, of uh, many thousands of victims of great terror and the others. And I don't want to, to, to say or to, to, to show that our project is only one which documents like, the, the, the footprints of the gulags or the, the repressions. No, there's a lot of very brave uh, people in Russia who are under pressure of authorities, I would say, but they do a great thing. And uh, there's also a good, good uh, Gulag Museum in Moscow, which is state and which is supported by uh, Moscow authorities and they have also a very good uh, <coughs> as, uh, interactive map of, of, of the Gulags and so on. 
And it's <coughs> interesting the, the fight between uh, official authorities and independent uh, organizations in Russia about the about the history, about the control of the history, I would say, because it, the, like that the official authorities they don't say that there were no bloods or no 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 victims. They they agree with that, but they would like to soften it a little bit. And, and that's another topic of that. <coughs> and uh, what we do, it's a it's a uh, it's a result of, of a very long process, and. Uh, you know, the first two expeditions to abandoned camps took a place, uh, I, I organized, uh, took a place in 2009 and 2011, and that were more like adventure trips to Siberia, because I like to travel to, to, to very old parts, to, to, you know, the Czech Republic is a very small country without any <laughs> wild nature, and I like to, 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 to Siberia. So. And only after the two expeditions, when I wrote some uh, articles to Czech newspapers or journals about that, then I was surprised how many people were interested in the topic. I uh, only after a few years I realized that it would be uh, uh, nice to go back to that places and to measure it more in more detailed way and to put it put it on the internet to use some new technologies because nobody. Nobody does it uh, today. So only after four or five years after the first expedition, uh, I uh, realized to 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 do it like like like, like this. And it has it has been a process. After this expedition, in 2013, uh, I was focused more on to uh, gather money to make the first version of online museum. We got the money from a crowdfunding campaign in the Czech Republic. And because it's quite expensive to finance all IT specialists and, and 3D designers who, who are able to uh, to do the models from uh, the photographs you, you, which we will make during the expedition. And uh, uh, the result which is uh, accessible at the online website. And I can show you some short video clips which will show you uh, how it looks like. <coughs> I hope it will work. It, these, are, these are like short videos which, which uh, it, it looks like uh, you are searching the, the website. Just, just illustrating. And we have a we have a map on the website, interactive map where are uh, places of uh, Gulag administrations. There were almost 500 Gulag administrations in the whole Soviet Union, and there are also places uh, connected with our uh, expedition. But the expeditions we organized just four expeditions: three to the so-called Dead Road, uh, the railway which was built by Gulag prisoners. Uh, 1947 to 1953 in the northern uh, Siberia and then to the eastern Siberia uh, there was an ex expedition to so-called Marlow Grove uh, where Gulag prisoners uh, mined uh, uranium for the first Soviet atomic bombs in the beginning of the 1950s and uh, there are also there's a lot of uh, remains of built barracks and, and the mines and, and we uh, also made a, a lot of panoramic pictures and, and other 3D models uh, via uh, photogrammetry technology. Uh, but these are just four expeditions uh, which is very small. Uh, to say. Uh, there were like, like 30,000 camps in, in, in Soviet Union and we met just 20 of them. So this is not the view of all Gulag system, just the uh, just the view of very small and, and a specific place and specific uh, specific uh, a picture of of, uh, of of barracks. But anyway, uh, there's no one, no other project like this, and uh, and so we decided to, to do it at, at least at least this. And we also put on the internet uh, some testimonies of, uh, of people who went through the gulags. Uh, there are people from the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Poland and Hungary at this moment. I would like to <coughs> enlarge it to, 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 
to um, you know, to put there people from other European countries and uh, so uh, everything is very very together uh, uh, interactive and uh, but anyway I would like to to, to build another version like Blog Online uh, 2.0 uh, and I would like to uh, find sources for that uh, and so on for the moving exhibition. It's a big challenge at this moment to do this one. Maybe, <laughs> maybe more. more uh, it, it's much harder than to organize expeditions to the Siberia. Online is more difficult than Siberia. <laughs> As a site. Some kind of wonder, I don't know about the gulags, but were ordinary political prisoners move, uh, mixed with uh, criminals? It depended, it depended, but mostly yes. Mostly there were. Uh, I was, I was asking uh, some historians uh, from Memorial how many uh, prisoners were criminals and how many were like political. They they say more than half were political, but it's hard to count it because many of people were sent to the gulags as uh, criminals, but they just stole uh, bread. Or whatever during their hunger. So I think uh, they are more victims of, of political repressions than, than, than like criminal, uh, the real criminals. So it's, it's really hard to, to, to say exact number of. of, of were they mixed? In the and they were mixed, and it was the most uh, horrible uh, thing for the political uh, prisoners because they were, uh, uh, they were terrorized by, by criminals. I may have uh, just the so-called special enforced regime uh, political camps. There were such two were considered much easier, uh, despite the title special and enforced and higher the top security facilities, precisely because there were no criminals. Uh, first of all, the ending of the documentary is very interesting. You show like this virtual map, and for me, it touches on a very interesting concept of touching, and sort of like the limits of our touching within these camps, even though they're preserved in some sense in the wild, scattered throughout, but there's sort of a bitterness going into these places or the inaccessibility to it, even though, and like how you said, and, and how Yasha said, Pen was like the only place that there was a museum once, that was their only real, but then there was political support, so it was, I mean, political objection to it, I guess. So the museum was kind of changed in a certain format. But, so there's this pressure from the government to interact with something that's still omnipresent throughout society. What do you feel, if you're going to continue to do the, these vi virtual projects that I find super fascinating, what sort of um, uh, tangible quality does this give to a certain part of history that it's kind of taboo still. Mm. Uh, so sorry, I like that. But by, uh, what, what so it, you ended with the end of the documentary with this virtual mapping. Mm -hmm. So it kind of touches on this idea of touching or inability to touch or interact. Tactility. Yeah, the sort of tactile quality of actually going to these places. And there's not necessarily a forbiddenness to this, but there is a sort of political uh, play where these museums can't be erected for a variety of reasons. So they could, but whatever its powers would be. I'm curious as to how do you, what sort of uh, tangible physical quality these virtual maps, these virtual replicas you make of these places, what sort of um, agency it has, what sort of powers it gives to, to sort of these actual places that are well preserved and that people aren't able to go to and people are not able to go to. How, how, you mean how, how to work with the results, how to develop the... Just, in just your opinions on this idea of this sort of like virtual quality of documentation and mm -hmm. the importance of it when uh, trying to construct a history, create a portrait of these areas, these places, etc. So uh, I think uh, because you also mentioned the Thirty-six mm -hmm. context. I think you are aiming at this realization of this expression 
не трогать, do not touch. Uh, Partially, yeah. yeah. The cute the your times of history, which is still very often taboo as in the story of 36. And what your project does at the end, as Alex was pointing out, that precisely what it does is it touches it. Right? Uh, uh, story? Or? Well, you literally <laughs> remap the whole place. Yeah. It's like you go to installations and museums that recreate whatever to make you feel like you're immersed in the place. Mm -hmm. But this is a sort of very specific immersion that is almost, that's very taboo in some sense. That's why it's very interesting to me. And I was just hoping to talk more about this sort of process. You know, it's literally. So can I also share a different mapping project that the coalition is doing, which might. Yeah, you can go, go, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so the coalition, our members in the Middle East and North Africa are working jointly on a project to map sites of um, um, human rights abuses in the Middle East region. Um, and what's interesting is, not as three-dimensional at all, and not as deep as Stefan's work in some way, but the feeling among our members in the region is that the, the oppression, the resistance to telling the story is not going to be there forever. And part of what mapping does, right, I think part of what your work does, is ensure that 25 years from now, or whenever, right, when things change, that the record is here. I mean, I think a lot of these mapping projects are making, sh the tactile part is actually really future oriented, if that makes sense. You yeah, know, it, it has that time machine quality of it, which is very interesting. Yeah, and so. It, for me, that, that's what's more, most interesting about it, is that the places are still preserved and they could be preserved much more. But they're not, I mean, the, in the film, right, when it says the taiga is taking them back, that's also true of the deserts in Morocco or <laughs> wherever we are, right? These places will not be preserved. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure a lot, of, a lot of places, a lot of barracks we documented six years ago at the, during that expedition uh, are destroyed today. Yeah, because, like yeah. The, they said it was one was burned. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah, interesting. I would like to ask, uh, you showed in the movie, it's a question to Stefan, uh, you showed in the movie interactions with the locals, like the monks helped you get you out and so on. Um, did they have um, an idea of what you were doing, what your pre project was? What was the attitude? Did they express any attitude towards the endeavor, or they just didn't know what you were doing? Like, oh, another strange, crazy tourist <laughs> in our eyes. In, in these very not interesting places. Because people who live there, they for sure they know about the camps abandoned uh, in, uh, in the area. However, uh, they don't visit them very often because it's even there, it's very far from the, 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 the villages. Uh, but they know about the remains of the railroad, about the remains of the gulags. Some local hunters uh, visit the gulags or fishers, uh, the, the, the camps. They uh, but they don't understand the historical value very often, oh, and they use uh, barracks for construction construction of new buildings, for example, or for new shepherds for, for them, or even they they use the, the letters or the paper documents for making a fire. Mm -hmm. So, and it's but at the other hand, uh, there are people. On the other hand, there are people in local museums who understand how important it it is to preserve these places, but uh, they don't have uh, sources to organize special expeditions there to, to preserve the things, and uh, they are not able to, to uh, teach other people about uh, the historical value of those places. People are not so interesting, uh, interested so, so, so much. So the, the locals were Okay, and we pay the money for <laughs> the from, culture. From indifferent <coughs> to like, <coughs> but not objecting to that. No, they just told some of them told us why, why are you interested in, in the camps? They are they are um, uh, uh, like uh, devils in nights. Oh. Don't don't go there. So. Uh -huh. yeah. The reason I'm asking is because my daughter is involved in the project, also dealing with memory going exactly to where you're going, <laughs> like Toro Fans. You just came okay. back and going again. And, but that has to do with the memory of um, uh, indigenous people that basically uh, were 
mostly extinct through collectivization since they could not, you know, breed deer and stuff like that and there is no agriculture there. Uh, and she said that while they were there last time, they were like minded everywhere they went as foreigners. Um, and she's Russian. Well, she's Russian, she speaks Russian, but she, is, uh, she hasn't grown up there and they look foreign. And <laughs> And uh, so there was nothing like this, like people, like authorities being interested in you or, no? No, no. no. Not objecting that no. you're going. That's interesting. But well, it's six years ago, so maybe today it will be a... Might um, be. Please. Oh, uh, what, I have two questions, actually. So one is uh, the towards you, Stefan, about um, do you know what the state of the... Uh, uh, Gulags are in like northeastern Siberia. Um, I only ask because I've heard of like the Kolyma Highway that's nicknamed like the Road of Bones because of all the uh, the uh, people died uh, building some of the road and the infrastructure. So um, I was just curious, as to, like how much of some of those remnants have survived? Uh, how much of the equipment and whatnot has survived in that area? You mean uh, the the railroad or in general? In general. How many remains there are st still there are in, in, in Russian? In uh, towards the northeastern uh, Siberia, I'm just kind of curious. I don't know. There's no, as I know, there there is no project which would count it, which would uh, be focused on, on on this. And it's it's something really interesting. These footprints of the repressions in all these remote areas. And uh, so I don't know. In my estimation, there. Is uh, there are like hundreds of abandoned camps which would be still in uh, uh, good to to visit and to map it and document it. But these camps are in very remote uh, parts, very far from the nearest settlements, and it, uh, all these exp expeditions, possible expeditions, would be very expensive to to, to reach the places. Uh, so there are these remains of the camps. Maybe there are still some items, as in one of the camps which we uh, documented. But uh, these are like, like as I said, hundreds of, uh, of them, and of course there are remains and footprints of the gulag, uh, like, like you you mentioned the Kolyma Highway, which is a highway connected to Yakutsk and, and Magadan, two thousand kilometers long. Uh, it was built by prisoners, and you can find some abandoned camps uh, along uh, the uh, the highway. But I, I don't know how many camps are there. I would like to go to Kolyma to, to, to organize some expedition to, to focus more on that. Most of this uh, of this subject never was was never counted and, and never registered in, in Russia. And from time to time, <coughs> we have some uh, some uh, absolutely extraordinary uh, reportage about about this. For example, uh, one and a half or two years ago, uh, the journalist from Irkutsk found that the whole system of canals between uh, between uh, uh, Orb and uh, Yenisei. It was it was another crazy project of Stalin's era. Not the railroad, but the canal between two great Siberian Siberian rivers uh, never finished, but still alive now. It absolutely, absolutely uh, dis disappeared. Absolutely uh, stolen, uh, not uh, uh, losted by by historians and 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 by by everybody, and it was found. Like in you, uh, two years two years ago, it's absolutely a pharaonic project with with uh, uh, old old canals uh, on the on the Taiga. So uh, it's uh, I think it's absolutely impossible to count this uh, small small lag punkt <laughs> so so points of gulag in uh, in uh, uh, Russia's map. Yeah, and then that kind of brings me up to the, the second question, which is um, 
uh, when making these those um, metal uh, placards for to put into buildings, how difficult was it to get some of that information, those specific details about the, uh, those people? Was that provided by the person who requested it? No, no, it's provided. No, no, it's provided by by memorial. We 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 have a chance in Russia. We have a group of people uh, and uh, NGO memorial uh, who works for. 35 years now uh, on the, uh, on the uh, Stalin repressions. And uh, Memorial have a huge archive uh, of more or less 4 million people, 4 million different people uh, uh, repressed by, by Soviet, Soviet power. And uh, what is the, maybe the most important thing, the people of Memorial have absolutely, uh, uh, absolutely perfect skills to find uh, to to work on the on Soviet archives uh, uh, in Russia and uh, in other Soviet Soviet country. And it, it's a big difference now, because for example, in Russia, the archives archives of KGB most of of uh, documents uh, concerning these uh, repressions uh, are now in the KGB FSB archives. It's a it's a inheritor of, of <coughs> uh, KGB, uh, at, uh, and it's uh, more and more difficult to work in these archives. But in Ukraine or in Georgia, we have. Uh, the, also the huge archives uh, and almost same because uh, because if uh, for example uh, some some uh, decision was made in, in in Moscow the same papers the same documents or uh, goes to different different Soviet republics so if you don't find something in Moscow you can try to 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 search for same in Kiev, and <laughs> maybe it will be most uh, most easier, much easier. So uh, uh, we, we we have plenty of information, and, and it's it's very important. We have a website of, of our project, and so we put more or less 900 plates, and we made. 900 personal stories, and nine, we, we, we can we can uh, uh, find on our website 900 different texts about this uh, this uh, this person. For every single person, he, uh, whose na name is on the, this place, we have a specific text made by, by our, our our volunteers with uh, with all. Uh, all this uh, biography and uh, often uh, uh, the photos, uh, family photos, family images, uh, or excerpts of uh, um, archive um, mm, uh, dossier. So uh, we, 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 we have very, very interesting information about these people. And this is also an uh, important part of this project because. Maybe uh, one day we will uh, uh, wake up in the morning and we'll see all 900 plates uh, um, uh, destroyed by uh, by state. It's it's uh, quite possible. It's uh, it's absolutely absolutely not not excluded. But this this text this text and this website will. Uh, will exist, and uh, so this uh, this story will uh, continue. To follow that up, can I ask, of the people who refuse the plaques, what proportion claim that no such person ever existed or lived there? No, 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 I'm sorry. Is that you? Who refused to to Never. Never. Uh, the, the people who who refuse 
uh, this permission uh, don't have any uh, any doubt uh, to to Stalin's repression or or, or something. It's uh, just no. I I don't want this. It's uh, because it's uh, 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 it's even not so political. These uh, these uh, arguments to refuse to refuse this. It's normally something very stupid, like like uh, it's so sad. <laughs> it's it's so sad for my children. My children will see this every single day. It's so sad. You have to go on the cemetery. Not on this not on this place. Not in my house. Go to the cemetery. Uh, and we, we explained but that the, the most of these people don't have a, any cemetery, any any burial, any nothing. Just nothing, just disappear. And this small play of uh, Mesrit as, as uh, um, uh, Posca, it's, a, it's a just one place on the world where this name is in grab. Just, just this, just, just, just this specific possibility, not, not, not on the cemetery. But uh, from time to time, we, we have this, this answer. Not in my house. It's so sad. <laughs> yes, it's sad. <laughs> um, in your archive, do you include the Baltic nations? Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania? Yeah, sure. You do? Um, sure, and uh, uh, we, we have some some activists now in uh, Latvia and in Estonia. I don't know why, but not in in, in Lithuania. Uh, nobody nobody asked us about, about this this project. But in, I, I I think one day we will we will start also in in Estonia with, with this project because we have some people who who want to work here. In the 900 that you've made, um, is there a Jewish percentage included? I don't know. I never, never count Jewish percentage. Uh, it's it's important percent, percentage, but by I I I I am never interested in in. I'm just wondering if people who refuse refuse because somebody. No. 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 It's not not. Uh, this uh, this uh, anti-Semitic motivation is not so important in, the, in this thing. No. Thank you. Can I just say one thing? Yeah, sure. I thought the film was beautiful. I thought the cinematography was incredible. In fact, that was one of the most moving parts of it to me. And also, the uh, the photographs and the, the written material you know, about the victims. I, I thought it was just amazing. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Will the film be available online for people that want to see it? Uh, I hope one day it will be online, but it's, it's very new, as I, as I uh, told you. It, it was never uh, screened in the Czech Republic yet, and I would like to organize some kind of premiere in the Czech Republic after yeah. I am back in summer, maybe in September. And I'm, I'm also going to offer the movie to some festivals or TV channels, maybe some channels will be interested. So if you have any idea how to offer it in, uh, to, to American TV channels, don't hesitate to, to, to uh, tell them to me. I, I would like to, to spread it somehow in this, uh, uh, yeah, to, to, to TVs or other possibilities. Let's thank our guests once again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if, if you are, if one of you is, is interested, I can show you some, some augmented reality. You have this bird uh, uh, here at this table, some results of our presentation. Thank you.
Послушай, пойдем.